Okay, well, welcome to, to the NACARA conference. Uh, it's our first time in online conference. It's the same challenge we, uh, the, the, mostly of, of you and, and the, uh, 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 there are this year. This, uh, this uh, digitalization we force of this year yeah, arrived to, to the NACA conference too. Uh, I am Javier Silva, I am a co-president from NACA, and it will be a pleasure for me to uh, share with you all time, all moment, all possibility we uh, cross our faces and our uh, words in these days. I'd like to introduce my colleague, Eric, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, for those of you who have not yet met me, I'm looking forward to meeting you. My name is Eric Delansky. I'm a marketing prof at Brock University in Canada, and I've had the honor of serving as co-president of NACRA this past year with Javier. Um, you've already, you know, if you haven't seen it yet, the Javier and I have a video on the main stage area, so I'm not going to take too much time welcoming you now because I want to make sure there's enough time for the session you all came to see. So welcome to NACRA. Thank you for joining us. We're looking forward to a fantastic conference. At this point, I would like to introduce the moderator for our panel, and that is the uh, Case Research right. Journal Editor-in-Chief, Gina Grandi. Um, Gina has given a great deal to NACRA and to the Case Research Journal and has uh, been a mentor to me personally, uh, my own progression through our regional conference and NACRA and my various roles now is largely thanks to Gina. So it's my honor today to introduce Gina Grandi. She is Dean of the University of Regina Business School, as well as the Editor-in-Chief of Case Research Journal. So Gina, please uh, please lead the way. Thank you very much, Eric, for those kind and far too generous um, words. It is a pleasure to kick off the conference and also with this particular topic. So the protagonist-author relationship and the idea for this, um, the credit goes to Michael um, as a suggestion as to having this as our starting point. And we are so fortunate today to be joined by two people who have written um, and played a role in a fantastic case published in the Case Research Journal, Hidzania Spreading Fun Around the World, which was published in Case Research Journal in 2018 in uh, 38 issue two and it focuses upon the growth of the organization as part of Javier's plans to make it a global brand. So I am joined today by both the one of the authors as well as the CEO or the, the protagonist in that case and I'd like to introduce them before we move into our conversation. First, I'd like to welcome and introduce Javier Lopez Incuna, who is the president and CEO of Kidzania, an education and entertainment facility for children, allowing them to role play adult jobs and earn currency. Javier founded Kidzania in 1997, and over the last 20 years, he's grown the company to include 27 facilities in 20 countries with more than 9 million visitors annually. Prior to Kidzania, Javier was Vice President with GE's Capital Private Equipment Group and Principal at Booz Allen Hamilton, Mexico. He holds a Bachelor's Degree in Business Administration and an MBA. Welcome, Javier, and thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, Gina, for that introduction, and thank you for inviting us to this panel. It's really an honor to be in NACRA's introduction panel. Thank the you. honor is all of ours. And, and of course, we are also joined by one of the authors of that fantastic case, Dr. Martha Rivera Pesquera, is a professor and market at, of marketing at Ipide Business School in Mexico. She teaches ed executive education and MBA programs in several European and Latin American countries. And so while she is based in Mexico, her reputation is certainly global. Her research and teaching interests are broad, and many of you may know her from her work published in Harvard Business Review entitled, What Entrepreneurs Get Wrong. She has a keen interest in entrepreneurs, including women entrepreneurs. She also serves on the board of several companies, 
And she is the author of the Case Research Journal's Case, Kidzania, Spreading Fun Around the World. Thank you so much, Martha, for joining us today. Well, thank you, Gina, for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me to represent my uh, business school, Ipade Business School, and to be um, an author of, of this amazing case, Kidzania. Thank you. And thank for you every here. For everyone that is here today, um, the structure of what to follow is, it's a conversation initially between Martha and Javier and myself, but we will also save some time at the end for questions, which I'm assuming, Michael, and you may have some other comments that we will try to moderate through the chat if that works. Um, okay. But um, will that work, Michael? That's great. So we're going to jump in so that we can get through as much of our conversation as possible and still leave time for questions. As anyone in the room will know in writing cases, the case writer and the case protagonist relationship is one of reciprocity and mutual interest, and it has to be grounded in trust to work well. Martha, my first question is for you, and I'm curious, as will everyone else who's joining us today, is about your relationship with Javier, and how did that relationship with Javier and Kidzani, uh, Kidzani is, well, how was that established? And so where did that initial idea to write the case study emerge? And tell us about that initial conversation and how it unfolded. Well, this is a long story. Uh, I have written four different cases about Kitsenia, and the relationship started in 2003. Uh, my first visit to Kitsenia was in that year, in 2003, and once I got there, I was amazed by the concept, the business concept. Um, Kitsenia was founded in 1999, and at that time I was at my PhD. But so I didn't know anything about Kitsania. But when I got back to Mexico and went in 2003 to visit Kitsania, I re realized that this was a great business concept, a great business concept that we should get to know more people to, about, about what was going on in, in Kitsania. So I wrote the first case in 2004 that was about La Ciudad de los Niños. That was the original name of the company, La Ciudad de los Niños, which is it, it translated, easily translated to, to English was the uh, Kid City. Uh, they cannot um, register that name because it was already re registered, but La Ciudad de los Niños was the first case. And the first case talked about um, basically, basically about the concept, role playing, how the kids enjoy role, role playing and how this uh, may, uh, amusement park in, in for kids was organized to entertain kids and also educating kids. So they mixed this trend in entertainment that was edutainment. So the challenges that the case presented was, were growth, yes, and, and branding issues. Okay, because they wanted to grow abroad, they wanted to, to, to go to other countries, but with that brand wasn't possible. La Ciudad de los Niños wasn't really a very uh, sexy name uh, to, to, to spread around the world, right? So they, 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 they continued growing, and in 2009, I wrote a second case. The second case was all about Kitsenia. They had already changed the name. The change of the name was in 2006 with the, with the second park uh, opened in Mexico and, and, and that was in Monterrey. And in the sec in this case was um, entitled Kitsania, building an expansion of a brand. Okay, so we, the challenge here was how to build this global brand, how to build this new brand. The third case was about um, Kitsania differentiation, differentiation and growth management. It was published in Spanish in Mexico in 2017. And the last one, the last version of this uh, Kitsania cases is the one that was published in the, the case research journal, Kitsania spreading fun around the world. So it has been a long and roller coaster uh, adventure. <laughs> because 
the amazing thing is that Kitsania, um, well, let me use one phrase that Javier uh, always uses. Kitsania is a never ending story. It's a never ending story. They have, he's so creative that he has always new challenges, new things to, to talk about. So it has been a, an incredible um, journey writing these cases. So the relationship was uh, since 2003, and it was a very easy conversation because I visited the program, the, the park, and I, I immediately asked Javier to write the case and he immediately accepted. So we started working with this, um, with an outline and you know the process and how to start writing the case. Um, besides that, I'm very happy to, to let you know that Javier is an alumni from IPADE. So he is very close to our institution. Martha, thank you very much for that. I did not realize that, um, you know, that your relationship was so long standing. And, um, you know, it certainly does make for um, a great opportunity for us to hear about how, you know, the idea of a case and indeed, Javier, there was a relationship and tie from, you know, Ipide, you know, that kind of perhaps solidified that relationship but truly an opportunity for us to hear how, in some ways, not a complete chance encounter, but a, you know, a visiting the organization and how, you know, 15 years later, here we are still talking about those cases. So Javier, you know, it also requires, I mean, I would say as an outsider, a big commitment on your part as well to sustain and, and continue that relationship. I'm curious about why you were interested in, in doing this. And, and at that time, what did you see as the benefits of having the case written about you and Kidzania? Or, and maybe it's not just the case, but a, a set of cases, um, you know, written about you and Kidzania. Yes. And uh, well, let me just go back a little bit more further away than Marta. I did study my MBA in Ipadi and I'm very thankful, but I really learned a lot. I really made very close friends. One of them is my business partner, by the way that I met in Ipadi. And, you know, I continue a very strong relationship with some of the professors in Ipadi. So why Marta came to us to visit our park is because, you know, Ipadi, every year they do this annual international, you know, week that they bring other students from business schools into Mexico. And for 20 years in a row, they have invited them to go to Kitsania, do the experience, and then I do a chat. And that's how Marta was involved there. So when they, that was the second year that we had done in a row, and we got very good remarks about kind of the presentation. So she was very interested and she did not know about Kitsania. She's not our target market, by the way, she's not a children. And, but, you know, she asked me if we, I was able to, you know, to, to look to, to, to do a case. And of course, you know, having two MBAs, I know in all the cases I read in my life, I said this will be an honor, honestly, if I had a business case, if it was really produced by, you know, Ipari. So um, I jumped into the opportunity. Of course, I didn't have to think a lot. I did not have to talk to my partners. I did not have to talk to my team. And I said to Marta, yes, I'm in, all in, okay? And that was the start of the process. And there's a lot of benefits about this because, you know, you know what that case is going to become. First, it's not you talking about you and your issues and your concerns. It's other people, which is more knowledgeable, more professional, more structured, you know, putting where you are in a different time period, okay? So I thought that if we could have, you know, if, you know, if Paddy could really, and Marta particularly, could really, you know, tell the story of what are, you know, what the problems we were facing, what the challenges, the opportunities, and the resources we had to face that challenge, I thought that was going to be important. And I knew later that if this was going to be published, you know, I will see that some other people will be reading what I was living, what me and my team and my partners was living. So that was also a great opportunity that if I could go not only read the case and see other people comment on it, but if I could be at the end of the session part, I will get a lot of feedback, very interesting, you know, you know now you're going to have not only Marta's eyes, you know, on your business, but you're going to have, you know, Every session, 70 people, very smart people, people that had spent a lot of time thinking about you, your company, and your issues, you know, and giving you advice. And this is free advice, Gina, because, of course, <laughs> nobody, you know, 
maybe they pay Paddy for a tuition, but they don't, you know, I don't need to pay. So I was very happy to have to jump into the opportunity to really make this happen because I think it's a win win, you know, the students win, Ipade wins, Marta wins, I win, and of course Kitsania wins. So this is, you know, why I really got very excited, happy, and highly involved with Marta to really produce these four business cases. Javier, thank you very much. I mean, you talk about that notion of really giving back and so that strong connection. I would say that there is, you know, yes, clearly, as you say, there were lots of benefits for you and for others in doing this, but it also speaks to, I think, your generosity, your generosity of time, your generosity of, of to your commitment to IPIDE, um, you know, as a graduate of IPIDE and kind of ongoing. And, and, and that's actually a very significant um, commitment and, and that generosity in building that relationship. So lots of benefits. I have a, I am curious though, you know, at any point in time, did something strike you that made you a little bit nervous about this? So was there anything that, you know, any tough conversations that you and Martha had along this journey in regards to whether it's negotiating access? Now, I would assume, given your relationship and your company, that Martha probably had access to all sorts of information. But were there certain boundaries for you where you kind of said, okay, Martha, we're not going here. This is, you know, this is an area where, um, you know, can we approach this a little bit differently because this is going to be read all around the world? Were there any of those types of conversations? Yes, I do remember some types of conversations. One, you know, we were in Mexico. Mexico, in those days, we had some, you know, kind of security problems. And, you know, putting really financial numbers into the case was not something we want to push. We were a small company, but we we're growing rapidly. So we really didn't want to publish a lot of financial information for two reasons. One, because you don't want to be so outspoken in Mexico if you're not a public company. And second, most importantly, you know, we were gonna start giving information of how much, you know, some of the, our industry partners of our partners had invested in us. And we really didn't want them to get information. You know, we had this confidentiality with all of the parties that we work. So Marta was really very, of course, you know, being an MBA, you know, herself, you know, she was really pushing to put financials, to put real numbers, to put many things that for us was, you know, really difficult. And we had never before published that information. So the first two cases, she did not convince us, okay? But for the third case, I think she really made a very good, clear point. And, you know, we had to change and she really kind of convinced us. So you know, sharing confidential information where it's not only yours, you know, it's really something you, you need to kind of open. And the next thing, and it was very important, is, you know, and uh, Marta really, really wanted to talk to everybody in the company. No? At the beginning, it was really the CFO and it was me and the business development. But by herself, you know, she started, you know, calling other people and talking, which was very good. Because I really think, you know, this is not about a company or a person. This is really about a big team of people facing uh, uh, issues and opportunities. So I'm very glad that Marta really, you know, she was really just went a little bit over the line to really speak with more people in our company. And today, if I had to change something, I will ask her if she's going to do a fifth case that she to touch, not to me anymore, but <laughs> to most of my team, you know, farther away, because I think that's the people who really got the details into the knowledge of what, the, what Marta knows about ourselves. Thank you, Martha. Clearly, you are a, a very effective marketing professor um, to be able to convince Javier that um, that the disclosure of some of those um, numbers um, and some of that information where there was a discomfort. Um, and so, you know, that trust was clearly there. But anything you want to add to that, Martha, around those, you know, those conversations in trying to persuade Javier, no, this is information that we need to share. Okay, um, yes, I was very keen looking for the numbers because I wanted to know how the company was really performing and how the different um, parks were performing and if there was any difference among them, okay? So that, that was the reason I wanted to have the, the numbers. And also I wanted to have the different perspective from the different executives of the company. Um, I wanted to know if the decision to go abroad or to, to launch new parks, to launch larger, smaller parks, was Javier's idea 
or it was already embra embraced by all the members of the, the steering committee or who was against it. If there was an, uh, another point of view to analyze, okay? So why was um, I so um, insistent in that, uh, in that position? Because I wanted to have some tension in the decision and in the case. So, so the, the readers could really engage with the, the story that I was trying to write down in, in, in a case format. Yeah. You know, I want to add something. When I said that confidential information was not only for, you know, in Mexico, but also internationally, we're, we're getting a lot of people copying our concept. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a lot of copycats, people that took our idea and wanted to grow it in South America, you know, in China and other parts of the world. So we were getting a lot of copycats, like we call them, okay? And we really didn't want to give them a lot of information, you know, especially on the financial side on you know, how our business were looking because we really didn't want more copycats to appear. We really want to, you know, kind of be the biggest brand in role playing. So, you know, also that sharing that, you know, to your competition is also, you know, once you're in Ipade, you know, you're very open to the world, right? So, you know, that was one of our concerns. And let me add one thing, Gina. Uh, we really committed with Javier that we um, will we, we were going to publish the numbers and all the financial information, but we disguise the the numbers, and and he agreed with that. So we really committed to that, and and really, um, uh, our promise was fulfilled. And, and, I, and I think that's a, a great point for our audience today as well, because often, you know, Javier, your concerns are, are you know, those concerns are often shared by um, organizations and case protagonists. Um, and, um, you know, you know what Martha has said there, that notion of sometimes we're able to negotiate, right? I mean, again, it takes a lot of trust on the part of the organization. It takes um, a relationship and it's probably built over time. So, um, but I, you, you know, that notion of negotiating that possibility of the disguising the numbers, everything else stands as it is. The numbers are there, but having that disguise allows us to still be able to publish a case that is based in fact, but does provide a level of comfort for the organization um, that for some will, and in your case, unfortunately for us, allowed you with that sense of comfort to say, okay, this is how this will be handled. I trust Martha. I trust what Martha is doing and her team is doing, and that will represent it in a way that actually is fair to Kidzania, but also um, protects us where we need to be protected. And I think that and speaks to the relationship. Go ahead, Martha. You know, yes, uh, and nothing has been published without um, the authorization of Javier and the, and Kitsania. Okay, so everything is is under um, his scrutiny. <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm bulletproof. I read that case many, many times, and I don't know if that's common. But you know, if I tell you how many times I read four versions of the case, but every time just to be that we're saying 100% the facts to really say what your feelings are, what your concerns and your you know opportunities are. So we really put the time, and I feel sorry for Martha because she had all these red liners, you know, every single. Oh. You know. So thank you for for the patience. And that's a process. That's a process. And I'm going to jump to that in the sense that that revision process, because you know, to publish in general, but in particular, I would say in the case research journal, it's very much an iterative process. So not only Martha, as a case writer, do you have to be true to the situation that satisfies the organization and the case protagonist, so Javier, but you also sometimes have an editor plus three reviewers to satisfy. And every time it goes back to reviewers, um, they think you should be talking about something else or can we have this information? And can you tell us a little bit about that process, um, Martha? So the presenting at conferences, revising it, submitting it to the journal. Um, how did you manage that back and forth with Javier in making those changes? And I'm gonna say, especially given how busy you must be Javier. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let me, uh, for me, from my perspective, it was a very smooth process. 
okay? Very smooth. Every time, once I presented, in, like for example, I presented in Accra the case and got the feedback from, from the people in the, in the round table, I went back to, to Javier and asked him for more information for some uh, little details to be corrected. And it was a very smooth process. And Javier and all he, the Kitsania executives have been very generous with their time, very, very generous. And I want to thank publicly thank Javier for his generosity and time. He travels a lot. He visits all his parks and all his facilities all around the world. So the one that had to be patient was myself and Andres Terech, but we managed it perfectly. And once he committed to a meeting or to, to, to a review process of the, the, the document, he really uh, was, he committed. He finished uh, um, everything and with the detail of writing down uh, things. And we had no problem asking for more information. He always was open to give us more information. And, and we had no problem asking for interviews. Uh, he's very generous with his time. So for me, it was a very smooth process um, and nothing else to add. And how about for you, Javier? I mean, you said how many times you read this, and you talked. You 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 were very kind and and framing it around. You know um, how many changes Martha had to make. But you know, did you really know what you were signing up for when you said you were going to uh, allow all of these cases to be written, and every single one keeps coming back to you in all of these different iterations? Did you really know what you were getting into when you said yes to this? Uh, I didn't think it was going to take that much time, but for me, this is not time spent. This is time investment. I truly believe it was very impressive for me. Once we had already written a case, when we got involved with your association and we published, you know, this, this case, you know, the case changed so much and you asked so very good questions, which I was very surprised that we even didn't, you know, thought about it in the original case. So, you know, really having these three, you know, people, editors reviewing and asking new information, new questions, a new organization of the case was a process I loved. It really helped me to structure and see what my challenges and my opportunities were in a different way. So for me, honestly, it was not really, it really was not time consuming or really not generous. It's not about generosity. For me, it really was about investing because it was every time, you know, Martha called me again, they said, we want to talk about the, news, the information or, the issue, or what do you think about this? Really for me was, you know, kind of a, a an investment and an eye opening, and it was very good to really, you know, kind of, I don't want to say redo the case, but really detail the case, which was a great, great uh, process. And Martha was making it very easily because she is very organized, and it's not something that she would just go and call me in the middle of wherever I was in the world. She really organized, you know, I need one hour of you, this could be the time, so please, can we get, okay? Or can I talk to somebody? She was really very respective, you know, on, you know, how we can get together. You know, as many times as she wants. This is not about generosity. I want to say that it was really in our behalf and our interest. So, and, and, so thank you, Martha. And thank you, Thanks. Martha. And, and Martha, you know that's you know that notion also of of being in tune with um, how rare and how perhaps precious Javier's time is as CEO of a multinational organization. Um, you know, clearly is something as a case writer to get access, but also to continue to get access is a critical part of that successful writing relationship as well. You know, I, I wonder with a company like Kidzania, because, you know, Michael and I have already have our, we have our invitation, Javier, um, to come visit but I mean I'm just in awe of the organization and I'm not in your target market um, but I'm curious about like how do you Martha come up with the decision to focus on and is it you know a function of that's why you ended up with four cases about Kidzania because there's so much so it becomes a series of cases as opposed to one case and and I'm curious if that's because you solve so many strategic issues to ask, or if as the relationship developed that you, Javier, kind of had more questions that you wanted to tell a story about as well. Okay, so, so let's, I, once I published the first case, I kept following 
and the company, following the evolution of the company. And with the first case, we invited Javier to come over to the school and, and be in the sessions. So after each session, I learned more about how the company was evolving. So in one of those sessions, um, we learned that Kitsena was facing international competition. So we approached Javier and asked him for a meeting, okay? For a meeting to learn more details about what was going on. So the story goes like this. They had a concept innovation in the entertainment industry. Then they had copycats, international copycats. So they wanted to, to find out the differentiation and sustainability strategy. Okay, so that was a, a very simple way to describe where, where, where uh, Kitsena was at that time. So we had, after uh, talking with Javier, we had a long working meeting with Hernan Barbieri, which was at that moment the, the, the VP of franchisees, I guess. I remember that. Uh, so we asked him for a long meeting to understand what was the situation at that time and what were the goals of the company to see how, how, how big was the gap between the goals and the problems. So we identified uh, with, with Hernan at that moment that the main problem was how to face competition and how can Kitsania build some entry barriers mm -hmm. because the concept was pretty easy to copy. Mm -hmm. So at that moment, we concluded that we could cover the, the following issues. <clears throat> Sorry, managing growth to understand the relevance of the brand and, and building loyalty of the kids. Then differentiation to stand out from the competition and diversification because new technologies and entertainment trends like video gaming was rising and growing. So you have a park, it's role playing, the, the fundamental um, the, the, the fundamental of, of the park is role playing and you don't have anything, have nothing to do with game, uh, with video gaming. So we structure the case with these three objectives to, to, to help um, the reader understand the challenges that, that Kitsena was facing uh, regarding three issues, these three issues. Can I add something? Please, please. Thank you. No, I think, you know, uh, having four cases and have a long story has to do that. Really, I think Martha found us in the very early stages. No? We were a very small company. We were really truly a startup. No? It was a new idea. This had never been done in the world, you know, role-playing series for children to learn and play. So it was really kind of a startup. And we started in 1999, and she was talking to us in 2001, 2002. Of course, when you were only one park, a small group with few resources, you had some issues. You wanted to grow, most certainly in Mexico, no, the easy way, no? But when you started kind of six years later, and you still continue to come to grow, then you were facing different things. We were facing how to grow internationally, to do it ourselves, if we should franchise, you know, how to take our brand international. Then you start growing international and you see a lot of competition, like Marta was saying. So I think Marta has been following us, you know, all this time to see what issues. And of course, as a growing company, as a growing Mexican company growing into the world, because that's not a lot of cases of Mexican companies growing into the world, I think you start facing different situations, different opportunities. And I think Marta has been able to capture, you know, at least now in four times, you know, in four periods of our time, you know, what are, you know, what are our concerns and opportunities. And I think that relationship, you are able to find a company, you know, from very early stages and grow with the company, with, you know, with the issues they have, with the problems we have, with the opportunities. I think it's a great, you know, long-term relationship. So now I'm inviting Martha to start thinking about, okay, the fifth case, okay? Because I think, of course, we're going to face, you know, now new, new, challenges. you know, challenges and new opportunities, most important. Kitsania is not about challenges. It's really about turning challenges into opportunities. So now I'm going to no? invite Martha to start thinking about how to not start building, okay? And we hope... 
to get that case again in the case research journal because that will be that should be our objective, Martha. Okay. Together. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more on that one, Javier. Martha, I'm curious about um, if you have particular tactics that you and your co-authors um, engaged in to ensure that the writing of the case adequately brought to life Kidzania. And so it was true to the brand in a way that, you know, Javier felt that, of course, it was true to the brand, but also for your readers, so that, you know, for those of us who haven't experienced Kidzania, that we can read this case and think it's fantastic, that students are in the classroom and think, I want to go to Kidzania, even if I'm not in the target market, or I want to bring my children to Kidzania. So what kinds of tactics did you engage in in the writing process to make sure, you know, Javier was happy with it, but also so that it, brought, it was brought to life um, through the writing? Well, first of all, um, it is a real situation, okay? Is There is no fiction in the case. So, and with a clear strategic um, decision. Um, and I think that the, the main um, tactic was to know the company, to get into the company as much as you can, make a deep dive into the company and in the, in, in the industry. We did a lot of research about the industry, entertainment industry, to understand it correctly. And where was the positioning of Kitsenia? And what's the difference between edutainment and not edutainment? Uh, and then what's the difference between um, an outdoor park and indoor park? Things like that that are very some very simple, but we did our job, okay? And then we 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 wrote the case as as the protagonist, mm -hmm. as if we were Javier, if we were. Um, the people that were suffering th these pains inside the company, but not forgetting about the reader. So the case should provide readers with an interesting, engaging bo um, journey uh, uh, to discover what the company is about. So we, we were very familiar with the concept because we had already four cases, three cases. Uh, written already and published. So we we had visited already the, the parks, the different parks in Mexico. And and one of the co-authors, uh, Guadalupe, Maria Guadalupe, uh, she had a, a young kids. So she knew the experience of kids and how they reacted to the the, the new improvements and the the, the innovations that Kitsania brought to the new parks. So that was one important insight and, and con collaboration from, from Guadalupe. And then um, as in any case, you have to bring some drama, suspense, tension. So we try to write the case in that way and we use quotes also from Javier and from people uh, in the steering committee and that could increase the, the, the interest of, of the reader. And I think it's just a storytelling, writing a story is just a storytelling. But I, but I love that notion as well of, of, you know, the lived experience, right? And so it highlights really that, you know, we think of case writing often you know, some people think of it as just an experience in the classroom and it's a pedagogical tool. But, you know, you highlight that notion of how it is a research methodology mm -hmm. and the lived experience of, you know, real organization, real experience in it, the quotes, but having to do your industry um, research and have your, you know, you talking about also with Martha always being prepared, you know, in advance. You know, that also speaks to the skill of a case writer in not only the writing of the case, but the building of that of that relationship. 
Javier, I have, I'm going to ask one more question to you, and I have several questions that have come up in our chat, so I will go to those questions next. But, you know, one of the aspects that's made this such an enriching experience, perhaps less for those of us not in Mexico City, but I can speak to our, our students in Canada who have been fortunate enough to be at IPA Day when um, Kidzania was one of the companies that was featured. But to have, be able to have you or someone from Kitsania to come into the classroom while it's being taught. I'm, I'm wondering if, you know, you can talk about those experiences or one of them and sort of perhaps what was one of the most memorable points from those visits or conversations with students coming into the classroom? So were there any things where you just think, Oh, wow, that was, I hadn't thought about that or, oh, you know, this was sort of an aha moment for you or sort of this notion where you thought, yes, this is why I continue to do this. Yes. Um, uh, first of all, I think going into the class when you're invited, you should take all the opportunities. So I will do one thing. One, you should not go all the time yourself. You have the opportunity to invite other people from your team to have the same experience. And I think Marta has been open when I'm traveling that somebody from our team because there does something enriching. It's enriching not to hear only from the students, but also from the teacher. I've always listened to this case from Martha, but every time I go, which is like 20 or 25 times <laughs> as of now with the last case, I really learn every time something new. Because every time she, she teaches the case, there's new information, she continues to add things, and there's a way, you know, there's something new that I can learn from her, which is very good. And talking about, you know, I love your sitting in the back when they don't know you're there. And you see all these very smart people, very honest people saying what they think if it was you. And I saw, so I love it. And I remember one time, okay, there was, you know, in one of the cases, about five of the people that were there were part of our industry partners. So are these companies that represent their trades in Kitsania? So there was this company that was part person from Walmart. There was this person from Avis sitting and they were discussing why it was good for them as a company to invest in Kitsania. And I really was very surprised because, you know, I never heard directly from them, you know, you know, you always want to hear what you want to hear. But that that day they were saying things, you know, that, you know, I never thought of. OK. And one person said that it was very inexpensive to be in Kitsania. And that was his point. And he made all this case. OK. <laughs> so I was so happy to hear that because now I have a good rationale to go talk to other potential companies, you know, which I learned a lot how they think, how they see us. And after he knew I was there, I said, I'm going to raise your price, your sponsorship to double. Okay? So, <laughs> it was kind of funny, but it's really and truly enriching, enriching, really, not only for you, it should be for everybody around you. Thank you. Thank you very much. One of the questions that somebody has raised in the chat was, and, and Javier, you touched on this a little bit when we're talking about sort of those points in time where maybe, maybe not necessarily tough conversations, but that negotiation. And one of the people in the chat has raised this question of, you know, what what can you do when, you know, a company, a company may agree to for someone to talk about the good point, but not everyone is open to, you know, the scrutiny and, and that notion of perhaps attention or there may be something in it that, you know, maybe you don't agree with how it's presented or maybe you don't want others to see it in that way. You know, Javier, from the perspective of the case protagonist and, and really it's your company who's kind of opened its doors, do you have any tips for some of the case writers in the room as to how it is they negotiate some of that relationship with some of the organizations where they want to write cases and, and want to write accounts that may not necessarily all of it may not necessarily be glowing right there may be gaps there in some way so any advice you have for our case writers i think uh, two things you have to have you have to have big ears because you know you're going to hear a lot of different difficult questions you're going to have uh, things that maybe you didn't thought of or maybe things that you should look at differently and you know i just love you know marta's you know kind of honesty and openness to telling you really things that you're not you know uh, how you say common to be hearing from everybody. So I think first of all, it starts with you that you need to be really very open. I think second, the case writer in this case, no, Martha has to really, if she's going to put something that difficult to say in a case that, you know, if I was writing the case, I would not put that information or that, you know, moment in time. But I think if the case writer really portrays it, why this would be good 
why this is important to be in the case, no? And why this, you know, should really add to the, you know, kind of learning for everybody in the case. I think that's something very important. So it's a thing on both sides. On our side, we need to be open and we need to be, of course, honest. And we have to be, you know, and, uh, um, you know, it is what it is sometimes, right? So, and on the other side, I think you have to be really smart on what type of information you want to put and the reasons you want to put it and what value that information, which is difficult information, no, is going to add. So if you have that thing clear, I think uh, you really can convince any, you know, any protagonist of case that really, you know, you have to, to see things like they are really, no? And it's, no? May I add something, Gina? Please, um, yes. I think um, in the process of writing the case, you have to have um, a clear vision of what you want to teach or what you want to deliver to the students. Uh, when they discuss the case. So if you keep that in mind, you will always ask for the relevant information. And then you will have um, the argument to discuss with the protagonist or with the company why that information is important to have it and to put it in the case. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have clear objectives of your case, you get lost in a realm of a lot of information and probably you will write something that is not convenient to, write, to to put it in the case and so martha if i understand correctly then from what you're saying that that planning in advance knowing what you want the outcome to be um helps you in trying to even approach those conversations um exactly. whether it's you know a tough conversation but also you know as javier has said you know having a convincing argument around why it's so critical to to the story and i also if i hear correctly you know no i know things emerge along the way but then mm -hmm. thinking ahead in the beginning so that you know when you have that conversation in the beginning in negotiating access it's sort of like laying it out all as much as you can on the table at that point in time so that when the person and the company is signing on to give them the opportunity as well to have clarity around what exactly they're signing up for so they're not surprised later is that fair to say yes it is pretty fair okay. yeah i want to add something you know and i think i truly believe you know that if you as a protagonist are going to be given information and some of your time to rewrite a case i don't think you should see this process to write the case you want to, to write honestly no? You really have to, to be open that somebody is going to write, you know, a different case. Then this is not us leading what we want to say about us and our opportunities in the case. No, it is somebody outside of the company that's saying how they see the opportunity right now. And, you know, they frame it differently. And if you, if you as a protagonist just want to go, you know, I want like this, I want you to say this, I want you to put this information, I want you to don't put this information. I think that's wrong. Honestly, I think if you are willing to be the protagonist, you really have to open yourself to see, you know, how, you know, a case writer can really look at differently and you have to be open to that. So it's not you guiding the process, it's really you, you know, it really collaborating for the process. Javier, I will say that's an exceptional attitude. And, um, you know, I wish I could take you along to all yeah. the negotiations that I do in getting <laughs> access to organizations because, um, you know, I, I your your view on that is exceptional and i think perhaps speaks to who you are as a ceo and your willingness um to share the story of, of kidzania because i think that um you know and for good reasons but not everyone really approaches it in that way so i do think that you are a very unique um and um special uh protagonist that martha you've been very fortunate to build that that relationship um, we've had someone else, when you talk about kind of the, um, you know, you know where you're starting, but as we've already said, as the process unfolds through reviewing, sometimes things get altered along the way. One of the people who's joined us today have asked a question around, you know, as you went through the case writing and review process, did the learning objectives change or did the, the focus of the case change throughout that process, Martha? Not really, Gina, because we had this meeting, as, as I mentioned before, we had this meeting, uh, this long meeting to understand the company at that moment in, for the, the case that we published in the, the journal. 
uh, to understand what was going on in the company. So from that meeting, we had a clear objective of what we wanted to to teach with the case. And, and in parallel, we wrote the teaching note. So we kept the, 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 the starting objectives the same, and we, we just complemented the information that we needed to, to, to really reflect in the, in the document uh, the information needed to solve the case. And, and it's, um, you know, someone has just raised a note, Javier, be careful because um, in agreeing to these things, you might create more work for yourself. Someone has just made a note to say, maybe Javier could share his story in CRJ, which we could use to demonstrate the advantages of a casework for an organization. So Javier, if, if, if at some point in the near future, um, I get to Martha and say, could you tap Javier on the shoulder? So this is what happens when you agree to these types of things, Javier. Yes, I would love to. And I said, you know, giving back, you know, we teach children in Kitsania how to give back. So if you want to teach something that you have to prove it yourself. So first of all, I'm really a person that thinks about giving back. So first I want to give back, of course, to Martha because she's been an Ipadi, she's been good for me in my history and my company. And also, I'm honestly very proud and honored that we were, you know, really published in the, you know, in the case research journal. So, you know, as a giving way, anything you want to ask us, and if anything, I can, I can really support, you know, new protagonists, okay, about being part of this process. I would love to, and please count me, okay? Promise. Thank you. I will put you. my investment, not only time, but also my team, okay, to see how, you know, this could be something good for you and your organization. Thank you, Javier. One of the one of the things we talked about, Martha, was this disguising of the numbers. And someone raised a question, and they're curious if you could talk a little bit more about that. Now, I don't, I don't need you don't need to be specific in the sense so that you're revealing what the real numbers were. But we do have someone who's curious about you know what you did do and and around disguising the numbers and sort of perhaps also Javier, you could then comment on you know where you felt comfortable with that disguise and in what way. Okay. So um, Javier disclosed the financials from the company as they were, the real numbers. So what we promise is to multiply those numbers uh, for an X multiplier and then presented him with a new set of figures. And that was it. He agreed with that and that was it. That was very simple. Okay. And I also think that's something that helped us you know, if you go into detail, there was some certain information, the detail on the line by line that you really, and Martha was very smart to really put some things together, you know, just putting some, we added some, some income into different categories. And that helped us not to give information that you didn't want it to disclose. Yeah. So even if it was really not that changed the numbers, to be honest, but it was more about how you share the information. So it was really giving the right number in the right line that you did, were not comfortable about sharing, but we were putting in there in, in a group instead of a line. Mm -hmm. So I think Martha was the one who proposed that we should do this. And I think it was very smart of her because we really felt very comfortable, not really about changing the numbers, but you know about the, the level of detail where you wanted to, mm -hmm. to go. Great, thank you. We've also had a question around the notion of, um, you know, lots of cases have a lot of contextual information in it that isn't always linked to the decision at hand. And, and I'm curious, Martha, for both of you, perhaps, and Javier, you know, your thoughts on the notion of having this perhaps overly rich case with lots of information in versus a kind of streamlined case. And I'm wondering if, you know, that was also part of your decision to have multiple cases around Kidzania to allow you to have a more streamlined case. Any thoughts on that? Well, um, I think uh, we wrote the, the, the different cases because it was um, as time, life, how, how life was evolving, not getting along, okay? So uh, the last case, the one that was published in the, the, the case research journal, uh, we did a very <laughs> tough uh, effort to summarize a lot of information that we had already published in the other cases. And yes, you always want to put much of, uh, as much information as you, as you like 
in order to to explain the context and explain the the contextual situation in which the company is is moving around but um if we 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 consider each case independently nothing there was not like like a series this is part a b or c no each one has its own uh, challenges and its own decisions and the last one yes we did a very very hard tough was very tough to synthesize the case uh, the information but we made it finally and it's a fantastic you know, go ahead javier you know, last night i read both cases the one that started this process which is case three and i read you know the one that was supervised by these three editors you know from nacra no? and it's very surprising how you know i think the the the, the meaning of the case is the same but we did it in a very shorter you know kind of a smaller and we took a lot of information that when i see it the, oh my god we didn't talk about this but we really don't need this so this, i think the scrutiny that you know a second revision on the case to be published in your publication was very well okay it was very i think if i was on their side if i was a student i really preferred to read the second case than the first case because i think really being very very smart on what enough information you need to give on context to see to, to really be in the same situation that we were feeling. So I think, honestly, I think Martha with your team did a great job going from you know the original case to the one that was published. And if you have the opportunity to really compare both of them, you're gonna see what I'm meaning because it's really, you know, it's almost half and it's really the same story. So I think, no? Okay, both of you did let me job. add one thing. This is the value that this type of conference adds to case writers. If you want to write a good case, come to this type of conferences because you will receive that feedback and that help from other scholars that will really improve your your masterpiece thank you um and what a wonderful way to to close up our or tidy up our conversation i cannot thank both of you enough um what a wonderful conversation we have other questions that have emerged and and we never have enough time but it has been a, a wonderfully engaging conversation you know as we can also see on the screen the gifted matt um who has depicted our conversation along the way and um i'm looking forward to us being able to have access to that michael but thank you matt and i want to say both to you javier and to you martha thank you for making time today for us it's been a great conversation and javier i can't wait to hear what comes next with kinzania Ah, very good. Uh, thank you, Gina. Thank you for the opportunity, for the invitation. Thank you to for NACRA and thank you to Martha and Nipak. Honestly, this has been an honor, you know, having this chat with you. And of course, I learned again. So now I'm going to see how we can do, you know, from our side, a better case for the fifth edition. Sounds okay, good. So and the next time we see each other, Javier, let's make it in person when I'm visiting Mexico um, so that I can see Kid Zania. So thank you both. Yes, we have to make it thank physically. Thank you very much, Gina. Thank, thank you very much for the invitation. For everybody. Absolutely. And for giving us the space uh, to talk about this interesting um, idea of author relationship with a protagonist. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the conference and great success for the conference. Speak soon, Martha, and thank you again. No, thank